Last month, our action thriller movie that had a color and an animal in its title was Black Panther. So this month, that movie is Black Widow. I mean Red Sparrow. This was a very ironic viewing for me for Red Sparrow because before the movie even started, they ran an ad for a Fathom Events screening for the Bolshoi Ballet. And in Red Sparrow, the Bolshoi Ballet actually plays a pretty big part in the movie and not necessarily a positive one. So I found that kind of ironic that you would choose to advertise your recent production in front of a movie that doesn't paint your company in the best light. To kind of give you just a rundown of the general plot, uh, Jennifer Lawrence plays this premier ballerina named Dominica who ends up getting showgirls by one of her co-dancers in the production and she's basically kind of put out to pasture by the Bolshoi Ballet Company and she's got this sickly mother who she has to take care of and now that she no longer has a job with that company her benefits are all dried up essentially and then her uncle who happens to work in Russian intelligence kind of comes to the rescue by enlisting her in this Red Sparrow program which is essentially the Black Widow program from Marvel taking young cadets and soldiers and disciplining them to become ultimate intelligence gatherers and uh, readers of people and uh, masters of seduction and espionage. She goes into the program and then the next part of the movie deals with her trying to entice and gather information from this CIA operative played by Joel Edgerton who's in Russia to meet with his uh, mole, his contact within the Russian government. It's kind of like does he know who she is? Does he, she know who he is? Uh, who is the mole? And ultimately, what is Dominica going to get out of this whole ordeal? And I know I joked about this quite a bit when I first saw the trailers for this movie come out. I was one of those people being like, why isn't this a Black Widow prequel? Why isn't this Scarlett Johansson uh, as Black Widow meeting Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye for the first time? And kind of left it at just that, a joke. And I was going to go into the movie and just try to judge it as best as I could on its own merits as a spy espionage thriller. And as I was watching the movie, I wasn't really annoyed or angry about anything in the movie in particular, but I found myself kind of detaching from the viewing experience every once in a while and actually kind of letting my mind wander a little bit to points like, seriously considering, why isn't this a Black Widow Hawkeye movie or prequel? It might be a little bit more emotionally investing for me if it was because I, I I really couldn't as much as I was interested in the plot and how characters kind of played off of each other in this story I didn't really care so much about the actual characters and that's not to take away from the merits of the movie there is stuff to enjoy in this film I feel uh, I feel the actors are all giving B to A performances. It is shot very well. It is very... The pacing, I feel, really has some good suspenseful beats that pay off from time to time. Overall, I just found, like, kind of the actual journey that Dominica goes through, I really just couldn't find myself caring too much about other than seeing, like, okay, I kind of wonder how she's going to turn the tables on this person or on this person, but not so much because I like the character of Dominica. It's more about like, I know that's what happens in spy thriller movies and I'm just waiting for that moment. Again, that's not to take away from what Jennifer Lawrence is doing. I like Jennifer Lawrence just fine in a lot of movies. I feel she does really solid work and I was kind of looking forward to this movie as being that one film that would really make me kind of see the darker side of what she can do as an actress. All the time I've been hearing about this film, I heard about like how it's really gritty, really kind of brutal at times. I was really curious to see what she could do with that type of more, let's say, brutally honest material than what she usually gets, where she has to play kind of the stoic, protagonist or the innocent kind of central figure. I wanted to see her play a character that perhaps was a little bit more emotionally compromised or a little bit more, let's say, 
murkier with her morals than what we've seen in previous films, like in the Hunger Games stuff, or in, you know, like, the X-Men franchises, where she's kind of put in a very similar action lead type of role. But as the, as the movie was going on, I realized that we don't really get a lot of time to really get where Dominique is coming from in the movie in order for us to kind of establish that anchor. They pretty much start the movie off with her getting injured and losing this job and you get a sense you get a sense of what her primary goals are. Self-preservation and caring for her invalid mother. Cool. Noble intentions, sure, but we never actually see like those those two goals really resonate too much with the character. And that's why I'm not harping on the movie so much because I'm not really sure if that's just a flub on the movie maker's part or if that's intentional and that's kind of the delicate balance when it comes to the spy genre is that you don't want to tip your hat too much as to saying like this very uh, duplicitous type of character is your protagonist root for them you don't want to be doing that all the time to your audience otherwise you're really downplaying like what your audience can take away in terms of okay I can figure things out for myself but at the same time if it's just murky and ambiguous as to where her allegiances are for just being murky and ambiguous sake, that doesn't really satisfy either. The whole time that she's kind of going through the story, with certain exceptions, she plays very blank slate. And I don't want to put that on Jennifer Lawrence. It, I just feel like there's really not much material-wise here for her to do other than to just be like, I can play any side I want. I am a walking question mark. Figure me out, audience. This is all I'm giving you, even though I have this backstory. I'm not going to show any emotional attachment to that. That's kind of what I was getting from the movie. Okay, I'm being told I should care about certain things with regards to this character, but the actual performance and the actual pacing of the story isn't doing anything in service of that. I'm being, I'm being explained why I should care about Dominica rather than seeing why I should care about Dominica. The same goes for uh, Joel Edgerton, who, you know, I, I enjoy his work too. Like, I, he's, these are both really solid actors, but he's played very one note. He's a very one-dimensional, like, all-around good guy, and that's all you should take away from him. There's nothing really complex about his characterization. There's nothing really that leaves you guessing about what his intentions are throughout the story. He is the all-around kind of like, I'm the stand-up good person that's gonna try to save this girl. And that's it. And that's why whenever they have scenes together where I think the intent is that they're supposed to be kind of milking each other for information and you're not quite sure if she's being sincere with him or if he's being sincere with her or if it's just all a means to an end. Like, part of me was kind of thinking like, you know what? I would love to see this between Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow and Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye. Because at least I have a frame of reference from where those characters are coming from. At least I have a sense of, alright, I can see, you know, Black Widow has had training to be duplicitous, has had training to kind of use her wiles to achieve her goals. And it'd be fun to see where that takes root from. There are some really good suspenseful moments placed throughout the film. There are some pretty intense things that are expanded on from time to time, but one thing I feel was sorely lacking in this uh, movie in particular is the point where you kind of see her acclimate to the idea of being a spy. That could have taken place in the actual training segment of the movie. Like I said, her uncle enlists her in this Sparrow program, and that's only really about 10 minutes of the film. She goes into this program, and we're introduced to her taskmaster, essentially, uh, which was giving, which gives off shades from Age of Ultron and all the flashbacks that uh, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow is having in Age of Ultron to her training. It felt like that, except expanded on for just a couple of minutes. We're, we really only see her in her training for about, like I said, 10 minutes. And we're really only explained, like, Here's, here are the depravities you're going to have to sink to in order to achieve your goals. And we're given glimpses of what they're going to have to do, but we're never actually shown, like, this is where these young cadets are taken and broken down to be the government's, you know, be the will of the government, essentially, to be the enforcers of the government. 
you're never really given that much of an insight into psychologically what is going on with these cadets, what's going on with her in particular. There's, there's a couple of moments. She is almost raped in the shower by one of her uh, classmates, and then they bring it back around where she has to basically wrestle power, the power from the, the power dynamic between them in front of the whole class, and she does it in a certain way. And I feel like that's the point where they're saying, like, okay, she is fully dedicated to the training of the Sparrow program, but at the same time, you haven't really spent a good degree of time to understand what that training is or to understand what effect it has on a person. It didn't enhance the appeal of the story for me so much. And like I said, I liked the ideas that were taking place, but I didn't find it as captivating or as interesting as I could have if maybe I had a character like Natasha Romanoff, who I have a sense of where she started. I have a sense of where she's been. Here's that point. I can kind of see that transformation take place and engage with that. I haven't read the book that this is based off of. It Does the book itself go into maybe more details about Dominica's thought process when it comes to interacting with uh, Joel Edgerton's character, I believe his name, Nate, when it comes to interacting with the CIA, when it comes to interacting with her uncle or her mother, does the book actually give a little bit more insight into what's going through her head at those particular moments? Because whether this movie intentionally meant to play those moments as very ambiguous on her part or not, um, I felt it, there was just something kind of missing from those scenes a little bit. And again, it was, a, it was that whatever aspect that I'm having a hard time kind of describing that kept me from engaging fully in the movie. Maybe it's just part of me has become so jaded with movie going experience because I see a lot of movies that I was able to kind of really, like I said with Black Panther a couple of weeks ago, you you figure out the rhythm of certain genres of movies pretty quick. And for me, there wasn't really a lot of surprise in this film. Even when, towards the end, there is sort of a grand revelation of this is what the last 50% of the movie has been kind of leading up to. Even when that occurred, I, I still wasn't that surprised. I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Like I said, the subplot of Joel Edgerton's character... Uh, trying to maintain the anonymity of his mole. Uh, I figured out pretty early on who that mole was. When you're introduced to a supporting cast of some pretty recognizable faces, within about five to ten minutes, you'll be able to figure out, like, okay, this person clearly is the mole. I made that prediction pretty early after a scene with Dominica that this particular individual shared. I was able to kind of determine, like, I, I think I know where this particular character arc is going to end up, and it did. Yeah, maybe it's just part of my semi-cynicism towards viewing movies these days, where I'm just, you can just kind of figure out the formula for a certain genre, and with this one, as much as there was some cool stuff acting-wise and visually, there was some interesting things taking place, It it was very kind of... It's pretty predictable. It's nothing horrendous. It's nothing god awful. I wasn't frustrated watching the movie. I just, there was, there just was really hard for me to be able to kind of keep that connection going, keep some kind of investment going. When I'm kind of like, I, I see where the road is heading for this character in this particular story. I guess that's kind of a recommendation. If you're not as jaded as I am and you feel like Red Sparrow would be kind of a pretty cool viewing experience in the theaters. Go for it. If you're a fan of any of Jennifer Lawrence or Joel Edgerton's work, you probably enjoy this. I mean, sh they do they do solid jobs. And again, I'm not holding anything against Jennifer Lawrence with regards to her characterization of this protagonist because I feel like she wasn't really given much material-wise to do, intentionally or unintentionally. Like, there's not a lot to this character. Red Sparrow, as a movie on its own, it's perfectly fine. It's enjoyable. It's got some enjoyable acting moments, got some enjoyable uh, scenes here and there, some brutal scenes here and there. There are points, again, the ideas that take place in the movie can be pretty uncomfortable at times uh, to kind of really wrap your head around a little bit. Yeah, give it a shot if you are curious, but for right now, it's okay. I just, 
I just couldn't connect with it too much. Can't wait for next month's color animal themed movie. Blue whale, maybe. I don't know. I'm tired.